Right, I've bought a um, new tool to use on my lathes um, that will turn both concave and convex diameters. It's for ball turning and um, it's called the Repton R1. Now I've had my eye on this tool for many years now because I could see the benefits of using this one and that it's a good quality tool. So the reason I chose this ball turning attachment over other ball turning tools is that I can use this on both my Myford ML7 and the Chinese mini lathe. It is quick to use and you do not need to take off the tool post um, to fit it on the lathe. And it can be used on the ordinary um, type Dixon quick change tool posts. So it is quick and easy to set up and also quick to change between this tool and other tools. So in this video I'm going to concentrate on showing how to get the best out of the Repton R1 on the Chinese mini lathe, how to set it up easily and quickly and how to turn a brass ball and do um, concave diameters as well. Now I've turned those three brass balls at the back there and I found the tool needs a very slight modification um, to use it and that is that the um, top bearing here hasn't got a cover on it. I found when doing the turning particularly brass the swarf gets into the bearing and the tool becomes gritty um, uneven to use and loses its smoothness um, but this is easily rectified. So what I did was um, take the tool apart like that and you can see the top bearing there the tapered roller bearing sits in the top like that and you can see that there there is open to swarf and at first I just put a o-ring on there just stretch an o-ring over the um, bearing like that and used a fiber washer which is um, uh, 40 millimeter, 45 millimeter in diameter and uh, 24 millimeter in the um, bore there and that one just fitted over the top like that and it worked perfectly adequately to keep all the swarf out. You can basically make a cover out of anything, a piece of card or whatever um, cut to size and um, as long as it's below the surface of the uh, face of the bearing at the top here. And in the end I turned up a bearing housing cover out of a piece of nylon um, and that one pushes down over the top of the um, bearing like that and when the tool goes together it traps it in between and completely closes the um, bearing off to any swarf. So it's a quick and easy fix for this tool. And I found that there's reviews online, you can read reviews on Amazon on this tool and various other places and there's people that criticise this bearing arrangement saying that it's not good because there's a tapered roller bearing in the top and not one in the lower half, it just has the ordinary ball race here. But I've found that this um, arrangement here is perfectly adequate, the tool runs lovely and smooth and any problems you get with it is only swarf or dirt getting into that top bearing. And it's a shame really because people buy a tool like this, um, they don't know how the principles of ball turning works. Um, they don't know how to use the tool properly um, they have a quick go with it and don't get on with it and um, then they give it a bad write-up and it puts people off of buying what is a really fabulous tool. 
So the first thing you need for the Chinese mini lathe or any other lathe really to make ball turning cost effective and easy um, to do, you do is um, some screwed mandrels or just one screwed mandrel would be enough. It depends what um, thread size you would like. I have one in 1 8 BSP, one in 8 millimeter and one in 6 millimeter um, because I use these tools for other um, applications and um, all is this really is for is to allow you to um, put the um, work on the end here and give you clearance between the chuck and the actual tool as it swings round. And to save money on making these tools I made them out of those weightlifting bars that I've shown in my other videos so it's just ordinary um, mild steel. And close up they look like that. Um, this is turned down obviously to go in the chuck of the um, mini lathe um, so it's just under 19 millimetre. I put an angle on there, I think it's about 12 degrees. Um, the knell was already on there from the weightlifting bars and then um, obviously the thread on the end there like that. And that is a nice um, mandrel to use um, for this tool. And I'll show these in use on the lathe in a minute and you'll see um, by using these you save a lot of material. Now I forgot to mention earlier um, that this Repton R1 uh, ball turning attachment um, can actually turn 60 millimeter convex diameters and 60 millimeter concave um, diameters. So it's a nice um, size uh, to be able to turn for a ball turning attachment. But to be able to achieve those diameters on the mini lathe, um, you wouldn't be able to do that um, with the ordinary tool post setup. And that is because the, um, the mini lathe is very limited on travel on the cross slide. So to be able to achieve large diameter turning with this tool, you need another tool um, to make it easy to use and that is this tool here. You might have seen this in my other videos. All it is is a um, Emco vise, machine vise, and it's been bolted squarely to a piece of half inch square mild steel bar. And I use it for many other applications on the mini lathe to be able to achieve um, enough movement on the cross slide to do many different jobs. So this one goes into the um, Dixon quick change tool holder. And um, when you wind the uh, cross slide back and you haven't got enough room you can actually slide this one back to achieve the amount of clearance you need and lock it in position on the tool holder. And I found that you definitely need one of these to be able to comfortably use the uh, Repton R1 on the mini lathe. Unless of course you're only turning small diameter balls. So now I will show you how to use this setup on the Chinese mini lathe and how easy it is to set and use the Repton R1 ball turning attachment. So to turn a 30 millimeter ball like this you need to have um, a piece of bar which is 30 millimeter in diameter or turn a piece of bar to that size and then um, part the bar off and face it off nice and square to 30 millimeter. Then I drill three quarters of the way through um, and drill and tap for the 1 8 BSP thread. So my mandrel with the 1 8 BSP thread goes into the jaws like that and locates on the shoulder and then the blank piece of brass 
screws onto that nice and tight. Next I put the tool post vise on. And the Repton R1 attachment goes into that and locks up in the vise. Next I check the tall centre height on the end of the bar. And when that's set correct on the tall post, I reverse the tool and loosen off the um, cutter side screws. So that this assembly can move backwards and forwards freely. Then I position the tool so that it's nice and square with the work and bring it in so it touches on the centre. So it's dead centre like that on the end face. And when it's in this position um, I lock the um, carriage. So at this stage, this is dead square to the work. The um, tool is touching dead on the centre. And now I can move the tool back and bring the repton round. And then, I'll just move this one out of the way. When it's nice and square this way, I push the tool up to touch the work, keeping the assembly square, and just nip up one of those um, grub screws on the side. Then I unlock the carriage again, wind the tool back, or the carriage back, and then lock up the side screws. They don't need to be um, really tight, they need to just be nipped up to lock the tool in position. And then turn the tool back round so it's dead square that way and wind in to touch the work. So it lightly touches the end face and it's dead center like that and then lock the carriage again. I then wind the cross slide out until the tool clears and move it into the cutting position and this is where it will fail um, if you haven't got this um, tool post vise assembly um, because you won't be able to wind it out far enough on the cross slide um, to clear uh, when you bring the tool round. So having this tool post vise allows you to get the clearance but also allows you to turn whatever radius size you like. So next you set the handle position on the repton to whichever way you want. You can have it this way or out the other side. And um, I prefer it this way so that my hands are well away from the chuck when using it. And then lock that one up. And now the tool is all set up correctly and ready to use. Um, but to check it, you can just bring the cross slide in and see that it's going to take equal amounts off either side of the um, bar. 
then you know it is dead center and all the settings that you've done on it are correct. And before I start machining the ball, I make sure that the cross slide is wound back far enough so that I don't come in first with a heavy cut. And you obviously need to take quite light cuts because the workpiece is quite far from the chuck. I could afford to um, turn this one back a little bit more to allow it to go further into the chuck, which I probably will do at a later date. But my machine will handle it because I've got um, tapered roller bearings in the headstock. So you advance the cross slide So I'm on advancing the tool by about five foul each time. And that's the ball finished. And then you unlock the carriage and wind the tool back or the carriage back and then you can give the ball a polish with some emery. And if you want to you can use a tool like this, a back turning um, tool and reduce the size of this diameter here um, to whatever you like. So whenever I'm polishing on a lathe I always remove any cutting tools from the tool post. And there you have the finished ball. So now I'm going to set the tool to do um, concave turning. So firstly you loosen the um, grub screws that hold the cutter assembly and take it out and turn it round. And obviously the um, cutting tip is the other side of the um, spindle in the centre there. 
and lock that one up lock these screws so it just tightens it so it won't move like that and then it's ready to do the um, concave turning and what I do is I bring the carriage in um, lock the carriage up again and um, if you've seen my other videos I also um, keep the um, compound slide locked on here as well um, whenever I'm using this ball turning attachment and that makes everything nice and rigid um, to be able to use it. And there you have a nice um, concave diameter. And don't forget you can use the tool um, back round the other way again um, to round off the end of bar or put radiuses on the end of work. Um, so it's a great um, versatile tool to use. And if you set it up like I've shown you here you'll be able to achieve all the um, diameters that they specify in the instructions.